Now you shall have to explain your whole life span What you did in the open of what you إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله Brothers and sisters in Islam we continue today with the inevitable journey and the terrifying scene of the Sirat when the Prophet ﷺ even so this is a statement of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu an was asked about the Sirat he said a Sirat the bridge that will be placed on the top of the hill fire where the monotheists the people who said la ilaha illallah will have to walk over it in their way to paradise, to Jannah, he said, أَدَقُّ مِنَ الشَّعْرِ وَأَحَدُّ مِنَ السَّيْفِ It is thinner than a piece of hair and sharper than the edge of the sword. Add to this, brothers and sisters in Islam, around it, حَوْلَهُ كَلَالِيب وَخَطَاطِيف وَحَسَك There will be hooks, there will be hooks, there will be also the amana will be transformed into a hook your entrusts, the things that you were entrusted with. Also, your kins, if you were severing your kins in this world, also it will be transformed into a hook that will be in a way automated to snatch and grab people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will simply command them to do so. Imagine beneath it is the hellfire on that very thin, sharp bridge, you're walking basically on the top of the hill fire. And also you're being distracted by these hooks around it that could snatch you. Add to this, it is so dark, so dark. And that is where Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he told us in hadith, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, رضي الله عن Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, في Sunan al-Bayhaqi, rahimahullah, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told that everyone will be given light according to their deeds. Some people will be given light according to uh, their deeds. Some people will be given, someone will get his light as huge as a big mountain and more than that in front of him. And someone will have his light as big as a palm tree to his right and less than this. And some people will have their light only as big as his big toe, yani his light will be in his big toe, big toe and, and it will uh, shine off and on, off and on. Every time that shines, then he walks, then it's off, then he stops. It's, it's amazing and terrifying scene, brothers and sisters in Islam. You will find out that the people will vary in their crossing over that bridge. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Classified them into three types. Najin Musallam, Makhdushun Mursal, Fanajin Musallam, Wa Makhdushun Mursal, Wa Makhdushun Bihi Fi Nari Jahannam, Aadan Allah Wa Iyakum Min Nari Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spare us from the hellfire. Some people will be saved in spite of these horrifying, terrifying scenes that actually made the prophets, all of them, make this dua. Allahumma sallim, sallim. Allahumma sallim, sallim. Yet, some people, and we will ask why, and we will answer why, some people will be spared, and they will cross over that bridge. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, labeled them into five kinds. Look at their speed, those who will be spared. Like a blink of an eye, كطرف العين, like you blink. With your eye. This is how speedy he will be. On that thin and edgy, sharp uh, uh, bridge. Will, will, will cross like a blink of an eye. His speed like a blink of an eye. The, 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 the twinkling of an eye. Then comes in the second type. وَكَالْبَرْقِ You know the speed of the, of the lightning? That's how, how fast he will be. 
وكالريح the speed of a wind وكالطير the speed of the birds flying five وكأجاويد الخيل والركاب and good horses and good uh, uh, good camels uh, uh, or good rides that are healthy those people will be spared those people will not be touched by these hooks those are the believers brothers and sisters in Islam and we will ask why at the end of this episode so we can strive to belong to that group even so some of them will be faster than the other but at the end brothers and sisters in Islam those people will be spared comes in the second type وَمَخْدُوشٌ مُرْسَلٌ These hooks will snatch them and release. And they will be walking so slow that the hellfire actually will get to them. Uh, remember the man that we talked about has his light only as uh, uh, low as, as, as his big toe. It will go off and on. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described that he will be walking in that sirat, in that bridge. And then he would fall down and he'd grab that sirat with his hand. And he would go up, 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 up. And then he will get the other one. And sometimes his feet. And sometimes the hell fire will get to him. And then he will grab again. He will walk for a long time. Until he crosses, he will look back to the hell fire and say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi najjani minki. Alhamdulillah, and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all praise be to Allah who saved me from you, and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you the Quran, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازْ The success really will start with you being spared from the hellfire, and then you being admitted to Jannah, inshaAllah. But the second type, brothers and sisters in Islam, from the monotheists, the people who said La ilaha illallah, they will have a hard time on the sirat. They will be snatched and released. Snatched and released. They, the, the, the journey will be so troubling to them. But at the end, they will make it, inshaAllah, at the end, and they will be in their way to Jannah. Here's the third type. The type that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spare us from. And this is the proper creed of a Muslim, by the way. وَمَكْدُوسٌ بِهِ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمِ A Muslim. Someone who said, La ilaha illallah, or someone who followed the previous prophets, but they were disobedient. Those are the people, Ahlul Kaba'ir, the people who used to commit major sins, and they failed to repent from these major sins. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may choose. It's not for me, it's not for you to decide. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will choose. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah may choose to give them a punishment in the hellfire for a while, and these hooks will grab them and will get them down to the hellfire where they will burn for a while until they come out from the hellfire through the intercession of the believers. Look, when the believers cross, and, and just to prove to you on this hadith, Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, they will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people who, remember the people who were saved and spared, and their quickness was like the wind, like the, the, the twinkle of an eye, like the lightning, and, and, and those five speeds that we mentioned. Look at this now. They will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they will say, Rabbana, ikhwanuna, our brothers, kanu yusalluna ma'ana, kanu yasumuna ma'ana, kanu yahujjuna ma'ana. Our brothers, they used to pray with us, they used to pay zakah with us, they used to fast with us, they used to make hajj with us. We don't see them with us, they fall down in the hellfire. فَشَفَّعْنَا فِيهِمْ Allow us to go and intercede. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go and take them out of the hellfire. Uh, these, uh, uh, the believers, they will go and they pick them up from the hellfire and they will recognize them because of the traces of sujood, the seven spots that were supposed to make sujood on. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَ هَذِهِ الْمَوَاضِعَ عَلَى النَّارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it unlawful for the hellfire to, eat, to, to, to burn these spots uh, in, in the hellfire. The uh, believers will recognize those people by then. They will go back to Allah subhanahu and they will say, our Lord, we have taken out those you commanded us to take out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them, go back and take out anyone who had in his heart the weight of a dinar of iman, of faith, or khair, the wording of the Imam Muslim. This hadith Abi Sayyid al-Khudri, Sayyid al-Bukhari wa Muslim. They will go back and then they will take out from the hellfire. Those are Muslims from the hellfire. The people who only had the weight of a dinar. A dinar is a coin. A coin, the weight of a dinar of faith or, or they did 
uh, a weight of uh, a dinar of goodness in this world, they will be taken out of the hellfire. And then the believers will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, uh, Oh Allah, we already taken out those you commanded us to take out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them, Go and take out those who had half of a dinar, the weight of half of a dinar. And then they will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah will tell them, go and take out those who had mithqala dharrah, the weight of an atom. And that is why be careful with any Muslims. Don't say that, yes, they will stay in the hellfire for a while. And we don't want to take our chances. But at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them out. So this is the intercession of the believers. Comes in the intercession of the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the angels. And the hadith is sahih. He will tell them, take those who, uh, out of the hellfire, those who said, la ilaha illallah, those who did not commit shirk. They will recognize them again by the traces of their wudu. And then uh, uh, a water called the water of life will be uh, placed on those people. And then they will grow like a, a, a seed grows. And they will be placed in Jannah. And then comes in the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Will take Muslims out of the hellfire. People of the major sins will be taken out of the hellfire. Because of the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then comes in the intercession of Arham al-Rahimin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Shafa al Mu'minun. The believers have interceded. Washafa al Malaika and the angels have interceded. Washafa al Anbiya and the prophets have interceded. Walam tabqa illa shafa'a to Arham al Rahimin. And the only shafa'a intercession that is left is the shafa'a of the most merciful. And look what the most merciful will do, brothers and sisters in Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fayakbidu qabda tan biyadi. Don't visualize. Laysa kamithlihi shay. Nothing is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant. Grab a handful. Look at this. فَلَمْ يَبْقَى أَحَدٌ كَانَ فِي مِثْقَى yeah. He will take out people who their capital was لا إله إلا الله and they did not do any good at all. All they said is لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله خلاص. That's it. They did not do any good. Those people will be taken out of the hellfire and will be placed in Jannah. But those people, brothers and sisters in Islam, will burn for a long time in the hellfire. You should not take your chances. You should confirm La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah with action, inshaAllah, with actions, acting upon it. Brothers and sisters in Islam, those people will be placed in the paradise, in Jannah. And again, a water called the water of life will be thrown in them and they will grow like a seed and they will be looking like pearls in Jannah, insha'Allah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, a question that we have to answer after a short break, insha'Allah, which is, what made the difference? What distinguished those who passed so quickly and those who passed so slow and those who got thrown in the hellfire for a while and all of them said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Let's take a short break and come back, answer this, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, for those who want to enter the Jannah, the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the believers, that's why we need to learn and we need to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us so that we submit ourselves to the orders of Allah. This is knowledge that we need to learn. That's why we're spending more time to look into the verses and to the meanings of the verses in depth so that we can get to learn from it what we need ourselves to be steadfast. To be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To ponder over the meanings of the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Scale of justice will be broke before man Now you shall have to explain your whole Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, right before the break, we talked about the monotheists, the people of Tawheed, crossing over that bridge that is thinner than a piece of hair, 
sharper than edge of a sword and we talked about the variation that is between them or amongst them some people will be speared completely and some people will be snatched by these hooks and then released and their journey on that sirat will be difficult in hadith al-Bukhari wa Muslim hadith Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that some of them will be crawling crawling on that sirat and we know with this comes a lot of anxiety and also the hellfire may grab and burn some of the people and uh, but that, that, that is the second type people who will be basically having a very difficult journey in their way to Jannah uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about them Makhdushun mursal He will be snatched by these hooks And then released And then comes in the third type Which is the most difficult one People who will have actually to be uh, Rounded into the hellfire by these hooks And they will stay there Until the intercession of the prophets The intercession of Allah The intercession of the angels And the in- intercession of the believers themselves For the other believers Brothers and sisters in Islam, a question that is worthy of asking right now. And this is what we learn from these inevitable journeys, episodes. This is why we're sharing this. What made the difference? What distinguished the first group from the second group from the third group? Even there is a distinguish between the same group. Uh, uh, Those who were spared, their speed is not the same. Some of them will be the twinkling of an eye, the speed of the lightning, the speed of a bird flying, the wind, and also the uh, camels and horses running. Even so, the people who were spared were different. What made the difference, brothers and sisters in Islam? You know what? Your steadfastness in the deen in this world. Your journey in the sirat, on the sirat, the journey that you will make on that bridge is decided now. How steadfast you are on the deen, brothers and sisters in Islam. Are you someone who prays for a week, for a month, who obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a couple of days and then he gets off? He goes into the dunya and gets consumed with the whims and desires, with the misconceptions for a year or two. And then later on, once a calamity befalls him, he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know the time that you retire from Islam, The time that you decide that you're not going to commit to Islam in your heart, this is the time that you will be spending on the Sirat. This is what will cause you to be delayed on the Sirat. This is the time, this time that you take up, taking Islam as a washy-washy, whenever you feel like, uh, let me worship now, no, let me grow up, let me just make some money and then I'll become a committed Muslim. Akhi, this what will delay you in your journey into Jannah on the Salat. Even so you say La ilaha illallah, you say Muhammad Rasulullah, but the time that you take in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is by the way is not my statement, is the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim, uh, rahimahullah, is one of the, the people, and that is, uh, you know, the issue of being steadfast in the deen is so important for all of us, brothers and sisters in Islam. It will help us once we die, it will help us in the graveyard, and it also will help us in the, uh, in the sirat, in our way uh, to Jannah. Uh, how can we be steadfast in the deen, brothers and sisters in Islam? And, and it's an issue right now that is so dangerous because of the amount of trials and tribulations that we go through. Number one, seek Allah subhanahu because that steadfastness is the act of the heart you see the the fact that you are steadfast in the deen is in the heart and this heart is in the the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah controls that heart Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith that we quoted uh, a lot of times in this inevitable journey hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As for Sahih Muslim in the quluba bainiya adam bayna usba'ayni min asabi al-Rahman yuqallibuha kayfa yasha now ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why by the way for 17 times daily what dua do we make? ihdina as-sirata al-mustaqim oh Allah guide us to the straight path in this dunya guide us to stay still to be steady on that path in this dunya. Because by being steady on that path on this dunya, inshallah, we'll be also steady and fast on that bridge on our way to Jannah. And we will not be hindered or snatched by these hooks. 
and will be given more light that will enable us to be speedy and quick so that we'll be spared from the, inexi- from the anxiety of the sirat in the day of resurrection. Look at the, when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa told us to, make, to, to, to repeat the words of the Anan. You know, he told us, say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu Allah, Allah, Ashhadu Allah, Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. Once it comes to Hayya ala Salah, Hayya ala Falah, what did he tell us to say? Say, La Hawla, wa La Quwata, illa Billah. La Hawla, wa La Quwata. In a way, you're being called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pray. You're called Hayya ala Salah. You're called to the success. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi is teaching you that you will not be able to make it to the Salah if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give you the strength and the power. And that is why, if you really want to be steadfast in this deen, you need to ask and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant it to you. Look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, brothers and sisters in Islam. وَإِن كَادُوا لَيَفْتِنُونَكَ عَنِ الَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ لِتَفْتَرِيَ عَلَيْنَا غَيْرَةِ وَإِذَا لَتَّخَذُوكَ خَلِيلًا They almost, oh Muhammad, put you through a fitna in order to say things that we did not reveal to you. Look at this. وَلَوْلَا أَن ثَبَّتْنَاكَ has it been that we granted you steadfastness? Here is the Prophet ﷺ himself, the Messenger of Allah, the best of mankind, needed the steadfastness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing that you need to do, that I need to do, is big Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why, brothers and sisters in Islam, every single day, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik, Umm Salama, radi Allahu anha, oh, one who rotates, makes the heart switch around. Right now you're sitting in front of me and listening to me. You're exposing your heart to Allah said, and the Messenger said, and that is why your heart is at peace and resting. Wait until you switch the remote right now, and then you end up watching a scene. Your heart turns around. إِنَّمَا سُمِّيَ الْقَلْبُ قَلْبًا لِكَثْرَةِ تَقَلُّبِهِ Your heart is called the heart because of the amount. Rasulullah says that your heart changes like boiling water. Imagine boiling water in a pan. And that is why Rasulullah used to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, the one who rotates heart, Ya مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِ عَلَى دِينِكِ Grant my heart steadfastness in your deen. In your deen. You need to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. ربنا look at the, the, the dua of the scholars in, in surah ala imran ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب oh our lord do not deviate our hearts after you have guided us and bestow your mercy upon us brothers and sisters in islam you need to beg allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um salam asked the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya rasul allah does heart change he said ya yes uh, the, the, the heart change every now and then based on what you expose your heart to. You see, if you want your heart to be steadfast in this deen, are you exposing that heart to Allah said and the messenger said for how long? Five minutes a day? Six minutes a day? And the rest of the time you're exposing this heart to music and to haram stuff? is not going to work. You're not going to be steady on that huge, uh, on that uh, scary and, 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 and terrifying bridge that is thinner than a piece of hair and sharper than the edge of a sword on the top of the hellfire, surrounded by these hooks. You're not going to be steady. It's going to be difficult. You need to expose that heart to Allah said. And the best thing that you can expose your heart to, brothers and sisters in Islam, is a salah. Is a salah. The, the, uh, is a salah and, and, and the rest of the good deeds Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told you and, and, and the hadith fi zahir Imam Muslim hadith Abi Huraira radiyallahu an badiru bil a'mali fitana praise to good deeds because these good deeds will spare you from the trials and the tribulations that normally takes you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, you need to understand this all these acts of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to you in the Qur'an, and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam delivered it to you, and showed you how to perform it. All these acts of worship were meant to do what? Were meant to spare you from the trials and the tribulations, and were meant to keep you steadfast on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at you. You pray, 
and then you come back, eh, then as al mustaqim Oh Allah guide me to the straight path. And you go work for a while. This is a fajr time. You go work until noon. And then you may get off a little bit from that straight path. The straight path in the dunya. And then you come back, and then, oh Allah, uh, you recite Surah Al-Fatiha and Salat Al-Duhur again. Eh, then as al mustaqim guide me to the straight path. So you always constantly ask in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to the straight path. Brothers and sisters in Islam, very quickly, what else? The Quran. Huh? The disbelievers had a problem with the Quran being revealed in bits and pieces. Allah, uh, they, they, they actually questioned the fact why the Quran was not revealed like the previous books all at once. وَقَالُوا لَوْلَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَقَالُوا لَوْلَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدَةً why? Why the Quran was, was, was not revealed all at once like the other books? كَذَلِكَ لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ What's going on with the Qur'an? Are you having a relationship with the Qur'an? Or just beautiful, nice looking Qur'an and then read it, recite it. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا My Lord, my, my people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quoted that the Prophet sallam complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about his followers abandoning the Qur'an. Read the Qur'an and ponder and contemplate upon the Qur'an, brothers and sisters in Islam. It will grant you steadfastness. The last thing, and uh, you know, each one of these, we could spend episodes talking about it. Who are you hanging around with? Who? Who? Huh? الْمَرْءُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِ حديث أبي داود في حديث أبي هريرة في سنة أبي داود A person is in the same religion like his friend like his friend الصاحب ساحب the Arabs say say that your friend will drag you who are you hanging around with be careful because those are the people who will cause you to go astray from the straight path you need to be careful and look for friends people who can help you people who will remind you of the hereafter people who will remind you with these things that we are quoting to you brothers and sisters in islam take that nasiha from your humble brother who loves you for the sake of allah look for a good companionship look for a good companionship ibhath an al-suhbat al-salihah bayna al-ahya فَإِن لَمْ تَجِدْهَا فَعَلَيْكَ بِسِيَرِ أَعْلَامِ النُّبَلَاءِ Look for good companionship amongst the living. If you do not find it, then there is a beautiful book called Seer أَعْلَامُ النُّبَلَاءِ that talks about the companions and that three virtuous generation. Live with them, open. Read about Abu Hurairah, read about Umar, read about uh, Uthman, read about Ali ibn Abi Talib. You will find yourself living with them every time you read about them. Connect with that generation. You will feel like you belong to them. Brothers and sisters in Islam, with this we have concluded the Sirat. Now the believers, inshallah, are in their way to Jannah. Let's find out about Jannah and Hellfire, inshallah, the next two last episodes of the inevitable journey. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole life span. What you did in the open of what you conceived. From big to small shall today be revealed. Your deeds shall then be weighed in this shall determine if you pass or fail. Heaven and hell shall be brought into vision. Allah alone shall make the ultimate decision. To all brothers and sisters, I'd like to say, I'd like to say.